we're going to go over medium now. And there's a lot, the medium. The artist must know his material. You know, in old time, great artists took great lengths to know about the pigments that they used to form art and masterpieces with them. And a lot of them took their proprietary secrets with them to the grave. And that is no different in today with uh, manufacturers. They have their proprietary secrets. They, uh, of course, they divulge certain information, but most of it, they, it stays within their own industry and their own company uh, in particular. And uh, we will go over some of those. Uh, although they make cross-linked hyaluronic acid, to you know, how do they make this? And what makes the difference between a Juvederm and a Restylane and uh, uh, a myriad of other fillers that are out in the market? So we will concentrate on medium as, uh, as artists do. We don't, you know, you'll use different mediums for different purposes, for different areas. <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit about the histories. We'll talk about permanent and non-permanent ideal fillers and hyaluronic acids. In particular, the cross-link hyaluronic acids, what we are using today. History of fillers. 1893, Neubauer uh, did the first graft in the lip area, and fat is, augments best where fat is. Unfortunately, there's that, when we lose volume, we've lost that, so injecting fat is resorbed very quickly in the lip, perioral area. 1900s, injectable paraffin and oils, occurrence, high rate of granulomas occurrence, um, so they uh, lost favor. In the 1950s, silicone, and silicones are long polymers of uh, dimethyl siloxanes, unforgiving material, migration, permanent, immune reactivity, granulomas, integration versus displacement. I want to spend a little bit of time on silicone right now, if I may. We're not going to teach that in this class, nor do I ever teach silicone, but there are practitioners out there who do use silicone, and they use it well. But they are by far the minority. <laughs> 